Just Friends? A fan fiction by Septimus Butters. The scent of strong methane echoed through the trees. Bow-legged birds and dumpy squirrels heaved themselves across the bracken, making a crunching noise akin to the combine harvester. This was the song of nature. In the center of this beautiful vista was a small clearing bubbling with old mud, and the sound of frogs dying on tree stumps. In this clearing stood a squat shack, and in the shack lived an utter Casanova. Shrek McDonbar was a love machine. Ladies and men from all over the land would try to court the dreamboat Daspigal, but the Scotsman always managed to slip their fingers, whispering a soft okay as he melted into the night. For the truth was, the ogre had commitment issues. Ever since he was a young wee bairn, he had wished for stability. But, being a contrary guy, he couldn't bring himself to give up the single life. Every time a hot maid glanced his way, he was certain they were not looking at his ogre exterior, but at the Celt within. Well, that just wouldn't do. He needed someone to love him, inside and out. Suddenly... There was a great <laughs> accompanied the sound of splintering branches and the stench of wet dog and morning breath. A grotty, obnoxious beast of burden crashed through Shrek's rotten door. Braying and kicking as he went, the senseless ass was coughing havoc, giving Shrek a headache and laying waste to his home. Shrek seized the half-witted homewrecker in a stinky, hairy, lime-green hand. Oi, donkey! the harassed Highlander cried. What in the name of neats and tatties are you doing in my swamp? Donkey flashed the ornery overweight ogre a winning smile, his oversized gnashers gleaming like decrepit Washington monuments in the warm light of Shrek's earwax candle. Sorry, Shrek, the naughty netty rasped in a thick Brooklyn accent. I just thought that this was a pit toilet. Shrek smelt the dung before he saw it. You did nay, he cried, eyeing up with pure horror the huge pile of Donkey's dung on his bed. You rascal! Shrek grabbed the lacrosse racket from the floor and brandished it at the uncivilized jackass. Sorry, sorry, mate! Donkey bellowed, squatting mani- ma- uh, maniacally? Manically, maniacally, manic. Hmm. Are those two different words or is this a typo? Find out tonight at 11. Manically, in an effort to calm the ogre down, Shrek backed Donkey into a corner, his nose several meters into the stratosphere. Donkey was suddenly extremely. Aroused by this violent display of passion, despite the fact that he knew his days were numbered and his best friend was going to club him to death, his Bermuda shorts ripped violently across his crotch, giving his soulmate churned attacker a good few of his bewhiskered genitalia. Ah, kind of new! Shrek shrieked, dropping the lacrosse stick, which would bounce into the fireplace and burst into flames. Donkey sat down in relief, yodeling mindless jams. Stop your singing, you wee idiot! You pooed on me bed! Shrek wailed, his Bromdenagian tubers flailing in all directions. And for God's sake, put your trousers on! Secretly, Donkey didn't want to put his trousers back on. He wanted to lift up Shrek's fine traditional kilt and see his family jewels running wild and free. Shrek, Donkey murmured, gazing wistfully at his skirt of the north. Aye, what do you want? I tell you what, how's about you go clean up that fucking dung, eh, laddie? But Shrek, no buts. Donkey shuffled off into Shrek's bedroom with a sauce, with a scourer and a bucket of mud. With a scour? I think that's supposed to be scour. Mmm. More on this at eleven. And the bucket of mud sighing. How he wished the soft-headed tundra jeller could understand. Shrek stomped back over to his living room and forced his fat buns into his easy chair. How about some urn brew over here, eh, pal? The hefty hobgoblin bro- <laughs> Hobgoblin. Broached, pulling a copy of good housekeeping from the floor. When there was no reply, Shrek began to worry. He heaved himself up and plodded to the bedroom, his beefy chartouse paunch swinging and slapping against his knees. The sight- that met his mossy opticals took Shrek's extremely noxious breath away. Donkey had artistically rearranged the mammoth conglomeration of guano into a freeze frame of himself and Shrek engaging in romantic action. In fact, the beautiful, still-depicted 
Donkey sucking Shrek off. Shrek was thrilled. Donkey! I didn't know you felt this way! Donkey raised his eyebrows. Oh, whoa, what are friends for? Shrek looked into Donkey's eyes, his beautiful opticals melting with love. I'm so pleased! Shrek sobbed. Now we can get it on without fear! <laughs> Donkey hee hawed with hee haw with passion. Shrek grappled at the firm moobs of the buxom burrow as Donkey sang with joy. Let's cut to the chase, eh? Shrek chuntered, removing his adhesive fake mustache and placing it on Donkey's booty. Shrek grinded against the mustache suggestively, and Donkey used his hooves to massage Shrek's chin. The two lovebirds brayed and masturbated, and then Donkey whipped out his bondage gear from between his chins. Hooray! shouted Shrek, whipping the sassy mule ecstatically. A tremendous odour of fried pie blasted through Shrek's house, and the sound of boilers quaking echoed throughout the condo. Ay ay ay, haggis! Shrek broached bombastically as Donkey spanked him to within an inch of his life. The sight of his lifelong companion dressed in a bondage bib and looking like a horny dominatrix made Shrek dribble and gurn passionately. Donkey found this an earth-shaking turn-on and proceeded to swing his nads to the beat of his heart. They were just proceeding to the final act when there was a sound of clacking joints from the door. The two foul whores churned, pegs agape, spit running from their chins to see... Pinocchio standing in the doorway. Ah, you wooden queer! What do you think you're doing? Shrek inquit, hastily removing his hands from Donkey's perspiring breasts. Pinocchio gaped, woodworm falling from his mouth. Donkey sat up, gyrating strongly against Shrek's cheap knickers. Turned on, are you? He broached, winking squiffily. Uh, no! Pinocchio squawked. Before their very eyes, Pinocchio's nose rocketed to the length of a huge train. It zoomed across the room, shattering the wall and narrowly missing Shrek's chin. I get it? Because, see, every time Pinocchio lies, you know, his nose grows. And the bigger the lie, the bigger the grow. So when Donkey asked him if he was aroused and Pinocchio said no and his nose grew really long, that truly means that Pinocchio is so aroused that if you were to stroke his Stiff wooden shaft splinters would explode from all over his member onto your beautiful, tender lips. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, uh, oh, wailed Shrek, his dung crafted home crumbled into dust. Oh, uh, sorry! As these words left the, mi- left the mouth of the virginal. Virginal? Virgin? Vir- vir- hmm. I'll get back to you on that one. Shrek was reminded strongly of his partner, Donkey. The sexy burrow that had only minutes before been pleasuring his entire soul. He suddenly felt a surge of attraction for the loser puppet, not least due to his impressive nasal boner. Aye, laddie, why don't you join us? Shrek roared, snapping Pinocchio's extended nose in half to make it more manageable. What a douche. I cannot imagine how much that would hurt. Pinocchio was so delighted he was sick. Ripping off his dirndl, the chunky wannabe dove into Shrek's bed and joined the party. The foul ogre, the cosmopolitan mod, and the wishy-washy bumpkin puppet grinded late into the night. Their trio of pleasure lasted many years until on passionate night... The flames of lust engulfed Pinocchio and burnt him to a crisp. The two broken-hearted lovers laughed themselves to the grave. Their souls were taken up to the heavens where they remained as a trio of stars for all time. The constellation is known today as the Chin of Love. You just have to believe.